So we have officially moved through. Uh, today will be the eighth of the eight healing qualities of nature. And so we're on the quality of dull today. So last week we did sharp. And so I kind of recap a little bit um, the relationship between these two, um, because you know, when you're thinking about the quality of dull, you also have to contemplate the quality of sharp. And when you're thinking about sharp, same thing, you have to contemplate the quality of dull because they balance one another out. So we're always coming back to that premise of like increases like and opposites reduce one another. So um, sharp quality, last week we talked about that one, but sharp quality, just to as a reminder, um, like what we might say that person has a sharp intellect, right? Uh, which means that the person is a really clear thinker, right? They, um, uh, they are sharp, they're focused, they're on point. And that sharp quality there can lead a person to have very concise speech, right? Um, the person is direct. They're to the point. They're easy to follow. It doesn't feel like their story's kind of spiraling out. You're kind of like, where's the focus of this story here, right? This person's speech is very direct and concise. You know exactly what they're saying. They're to the point. Now, in our speech, that can become a little bit imbalanced, right? And sometimes our, our speech can feel sharp. Um, it can feel very impactful uh, to the person on the receiving end. That person on the receiving end may even feel pierced by your words. And the sharp quality can also lead us to uh, feel irritated more easily, right? Um, so we might be prone to impatience. Um, I'm sure uh, some people on the call uh, know about that, right? Because some of us have um, personalities that are much more prone uh, to uh, impatience, right? Uh, one day my girls were um, so, so sweet. They were like going back and forth, like telling each other like the best qualities about one another. And, you know, Zoe told Amaya one of her best qualities um, is patience, you know, and that's something that Zoe sometimes lacks, right? And her personality is very sharp, right? So that sharpness can lead us to sometimes feel um, impatient. So the dull quality, though, on the other side of that, dull quality helps us to feel relaxed. It helps us to fall asleep at night. It helps us to uh, feel more uh, grounded or, you know, more connected to our uh, physical body. Very influential in our ability to fall asleep at night and stay asleep at night. The dull quality, however, can also lead us to feel like that cold, damp, rainy day that or that foggy morning, we can feel that internally. We can experience that through low energy. Um, and it almost feels like an inability to really think clearly or we almost feel kind of like stuck, right? We're just not sure which is the right path to take. And in our blood, our blood may become thick. We may have circulation issues or issues in the lymphatic uh, system, slow digestion. So a really key um, to this, we worked a few weeks ago with morning movement and getting the body up and moving the body upon waking for five to 20 minutes, key, right? Key, fundamental for the dull quality when it's imbalanced is that morning movement. Earlier, lighter dinner, making sure that you're not eating dinner at, at 10 o'clock at night, especially something super heavy, like uh, a sandwich or a pizza. Those things are really gonna bog down the digestive tract and increase heavy quality in the morning upon waking. So for our practice today, we're gonna emphasize lightness as well as the uh, pulling in that quality of sharpness to help bring balance to the dull quality. We're actually going to start on our spine, though. So we're going to kind of start in the place of dullness on the back. And you're going to bring your uh, block with you. I don't think you're going to need your strap, but it could also be to the back short side of the mat. And then you're just going to bring yourself down onto your spine. Just set the block a little bit out to the side so it can be within hand's reach, but it's not in your way. And you can let your knees bend so that your feet are flat and can stretch your arms out. 
from your heart. You can just do a few uh, windshield wipers. Any kind of movement here that you wanna do that's gonna help um, just kind of free up your back. Release tension from around your pelvis and your hips. If you like, you could even pick up your feet for a moment and take a knees to chest. Knees can be together or knees um, might be a little bit wider apart. And there can be just a gentle sort of shift from side to side. Okay, and when you feel ready, you can let your feet come back down to your mat. Your knees can point straight up to the sky or you can take your feet a little wider and you can let your knees and your thighs fall together. And you're gonna place your hands to uh, the belly area, the abdominal region. And you can let your eyes softly close. Dullness is associated with the concept known as tamas. Uh, tamas is associated with the mass, the density of your physical body. So feel the connection of your hands to your body and feel the breath beneath your hands. Taking a few more rounds of breath here, beginning to allow your breath to lengthen out or to feel a little deeper. Beginning to notice how the breath expands across your heart and your chest. Okay, one last inhale and one last exhale here. And then you're gonna take your body into a full body stretch. Right? So take your legs out long on the mat and you're gonna let your arms reach long by the sides of your face. Sometimes called the morning stretch, right? So the extension of your body out in these two directions is gonna start to bring more length to the muscles, as well as increase a sense of lightness and invigoration. So take another breath in here. And as you exhale, we're gonna come into half knee to chest with the right knee and right thigh. So slide your right heel toward the sitting bone, float the foot up, hook the hands to the right shin bones as you gently hug the right thigh bone into your rib cage. And then as you inhale, full body stretch. You're gonna re-extend out through your right heel, re-extend up and out through your arms, full body stretch. And as you're exhaling, slide your left heel, pick up the left foot, hug your left knee and your left thigh in. And let's do that again. So just breathing in, send your left leg out, sweep your arms up by your ears and then as you exhale right knee and thigh coming in to the right rib case inhale full body stretch press out through both heels reach up through your palms and your fingertips exhale left knee and thigh coming in toward the left rib case 
Breathing in, full body stretch. So sweep your arms by your ears, press out through your heels again. And as you exhale one more time, take the right knee, right thigh in toward your ribs. Now this time we're gonna hold the right thigh in toward the body. So as you breathe in, you're gonna let your left arm open out to the side and you're gonna gently open your right bent knee to the right. And then as you're exhaling, coming through the center and switching your arms. So left hand to right knee, right arm opening, and then just guide the right leg over to the left in a spinal twist. And then as you're breathing in, come back to the center. You can hook your hands behind your right thigh. Maybe your left knee's even a little bit soft. You're gonna breathe in and send your right heel up toward the sky. So just bringing some openness to the back of the right leg. Let's do that flow again, same side. So as you exhale, bend your right knee, hands to the front shin bones. Inhale, open your right knee to the right, left arm to the left. Exhale, pass through the center, switch over your hands and your arms, left hand connecting to the right knee now as you take that mild twist to the left. Inhale as you come to the center, let your hands hook behind your right thigh. Maybe your left knee is even softly or deeply bent. Stretch your right heel up toward the sky, pressing the back of the, the right thigh into the hands. And so for a moment, we're gonna keep the right heel reaching up toward the sky, but we're gonna take the arms, releasing the hands and stretching the arms by the ears again. Gonna actively press out through both of your heels, reach long through your arms, and then feel your lowest ribs on the very front of the body draw slightly in toward one another. One more breath in. Exhale, right knee bends, hands hook to the right shin bones, half knee to chest. Inhale, full body stretch. Right leg goes out, both arms stretch up by your ears. Exhale, second side, left knee and left thigh, drawing in toward the left ribs. All right, so breathing in, right arm is gonna open to the side. You're gonna gently guide your left knee over to the left. Exhale, coming back through the center. Take your right hand to your left knee, left arm opening out to the side, guiding the left leg over to the right. Inhale, coming to the center, looping your hands around to the back of your left thigh and then sending your left heel upward to the ceiling. We'll go through that series one more time. So exhale, rebend the left knee, hook the left thigh into the ribs, breathe in, let the left knee open to the left. Exhale, coming through the center, right hand to the left knee, left arm opening, spinal twist to the right. Inhale, coming back to the center, hook the hands onto the back of the left thigh and send your left heel upward toward the sky. So remember with your right leg, you can bend the knee. You could even fully bend the knee so that the foot came flat to the floor. So you just wanna pay attention uh, to your low back. Keeping the left leg extended with some gentle pressure up through the left heel. And then you're gonna take your hands, release them from the back of the leg and stretch your arms long by the sides of your face. Low front ribs, very slightly engaged toward one another. So as that happens, you're gonna feel your belly button kind of draw in to the front line of your spine. Deep breath in. And so as you're exhaling, you can let your left knee once again rebend, and you're gonna take your right leg and also let your right knee bend. So both knees and both thighs are hugging in toward your ribs. And then you can just take a gentle rock here from side to side. So we're gonna go through one more series of poses here on the spine before we start to transition up to kneeling. So this is where your block is gonna come in handy. If you have one, you're gonna pick up the block and you're gonna take the long face of the block between the inner legs. 
So we're gonna do some spinal twisting with holding the black between the inner legs. If you don't have a black, you can do the exact same flow without the black. Okay, so you're gonna think about stacking the knees over the hips and the shin bones approximately parallel to the earth. You're gonna stretch out your arms from your heart. We're gonna start by going to the left. So as you exhale, you're gonna take your knees down to the left a quarter to three quarters of the way down. So that's gonna depend on your back. And as you inhale, you're gonna come back up to the center. Okay, so this is gonna impact the digestive organs. You're gonna exhale, take the knees and take a mild twist over to the left. And then inhale, come back up to the center. Let's do that two more times. So exhale, take your knees, take a gentle twist over to the left. Inhale as you rock back to the center. Very last one. Exhale, take the knees a little bit to the left, a quarter to three quarters of the way down. And then inhale, come back to the center. Now we're gonna take the black and remove the black, set it to the side. Place the left foot down on the floor, draw the right knee and right thigh into the ribs. Slide your right knee over to the right. Half happy baby, stack your right ankle up over your right knee and reach up with your hands. You can hold around your ankle, around your calf, or even around your foot. Okay, so stay in that pose for a moment, right? So you're going to feel your knee, your right knee is going to draw down toward the floor while the sole of your right foot has this feeling of just kind of pressing upward into your hands. Take one more breath in and one more breath out. All right, and then as you're exhaling, this next good time, you can let your hands release so that your right foot can come down to the floor and maybe sway your knees a little bit. In a moment, we'll do that on the second side, but before we do that, I wanna do something that will just activate the low back, so a bridge pose. So bend your knees, place your feet flat on the floor. Heels may be slightly wider than the sitting bones. Bend your elbows so your forearms and your hands are looking at one another. And then you're gonna inhale, press solidly into your feet and float your hips up into the air. And we'll just see if we can hold, right? So you can go ahead and come in and out if that feels better for your back, but otherwise we're just gonna hold with the hips in a low bridge. That's just gonna activate the low back muscles from the spinal twist and from the happy baby. Deep inhalation. Deep exhalation. So one more round of inhale and exhale. We're gonna inhale, allow the pelvis to come back down to the floor. So you're gonna pick up the block as you pick up your feet and you're gonna take your block back to the inner thighs, knees stacked over the hips, shin bones about parallel to the floor, reach out through your arms. Take your next exhalation to take your knees a quarter to three quarters of the way down to the right. And breathing in, let your knees, legs rock back up through the center. Exhaling to twist the knees a quarter to three quarters of the way to the right. Inhale, coming to the center. Last two times, exhale, twist a quarter to three quarters of the way to the right. Inhale, coming to the center. And then the very last time, exhale, twisting a quarter to three quarters of the way to the right. And then inhaling, coming to the center. So we'll take the block, remove the block. You can let your right foot come down, left knee comes in. You're gonna take half happy baby on the second side. So you can always hold in that half knee to chest position or stack your left ankle over your left knee. 
and reach up with the hands. So you can hold around your calf. You can hold around your ankle. You might hold inner and outer foot. And so the knee is going to draw down toward the earth while the sole of your foot feels like it's anchored upward into your hands. Take one last inhale. And one last exhale here. Okay, and then releasing your hands, allowing your left foot to come down to meet the mat, maybe a few sways with your knees from side to side. And now we're gonna take that last and final bridge pose here. So knees bent, heels possibly a little wider than sitting bones, bend your elbows, anchor the backs of your arms and your feet, inhale to rise upward with your hips. So the bridge can be a few inches off the floor. It might be a little bit higher. So the, the emphasis won't be necessarily on how, how high you go or you don't go, but just giving the hips a little bit of a lift up to stabilize the low back and to activate the gluteals, which help to support the low back. Feeling a lightness as your center sternum lifts up a bit toward your chin and feeling your hands active. So activate your palms and spread through your fingers. One last inhale, one last exhale. Okay, and then as you're breathing in, you're gonna let your pelvis, let your hands come back down. All right, so to come to the knees, we're gonna come to standing on the knees. So you can just either roll to the right or to the left and come up, or you can also rock forward and back on your spine. Okay, so we're gonna end up using the blanket underneath of the knees. Before we come to all fours and do a little bit of work here standing on the knees. Okay, so you're gonna face the, the long side of your mat. You can bring that black with you. So we're going to take a variation of gate legs. So with the black in your right hand, you might place the black down, kind of lean into your right knee, and then take your left knee and let it open up to the side so that the left leg looks like it's in warrior two shape. Then that black, you can place it to the inner edge of your uh, left ankle, okay? So you're gonna take a breath in, we're gonna sweep the arms out to the side, you're gonna stretch your arms all the way up by the sides of your face. You're gonna interlock your hands and bring your hands to the back of your head to support your skull. We're gonna do a couple side crunches here. So you're gonna exhale, take your left elbow and tip it down toward your left thigh. And then you're gonna inhale and you're gonna come back up. Shoulders over hips. Then you're gonna exhale and tip your left elbow down toward your left thigh so you feel the side crunch on one side, underneath side, inhale, rise up. Again, exhale, elbow toward knee. And then inhale as you rock up. This will be the last one. Exhale, tip your left elbow down toward your knee and inhale as you come up. So you're gonna keep your legs in that same position, but you're gonna sweep your arms straight out from your heart. Your left arm is gonna stay extended while your right hand comes down and connects to the right side of the pelvis. So you're gonna take a variation of extended side angle here. So you're gonna lean toward your left leg and then your left hand is gonna come down to meet the black. Now, wherever you started may be too high, it may be too low, right? Um, so just find a place that feels right. Another thing you can do if you don't have a block or aren't using a block, you can place your hand to your inside of your ankle. So wherever you land is great. And so you can use your left elbow and your left knee to anchor in toward one another. So feel a little pressure from your elbow and a little pressure in with your knee. You can stay with your right hand on your right hip, or if you like, you can inhale, sweep your right arm out, sweep your right arm up, and then bring the right arm maybe by the ear, maybe turning the palm down to face the floor. Take a breath in. 
and a breath out. Okay, one more inhale. We're going to exhale and draw the belly into the spine and use that to help come help bring you up. You can bring your block with you. So just shifting up and then you can shift your left knee back down to the floor. <laughs> so the smoothest way I found to transition is take the block into the left hand, lean into the block, pick up your right foot and then place your right foot to the floor. Then transition the block to the inner right ankle. All right, so as you land here, shoulders over hips, breathe in, sweep your arms up by your ears. Interlock your hands and bring your hands to the back of your head. You're going to take a breath in, and then as you're exhaling, you're going to take your right elbow, and you're going to tip it down toward your right knee and thigh. And then you're going to inhale and rise back up. Exhale, tip your right elbow down toward your right knee. And inhale as you rise up. We're going to do that last two times. Exhale, tipping down. Inhale as you rise up. Last one. Exhale as you tilt. And inhale as you rise. And you're going to take your arms and send them outward from your heart. Feeling a sense of energy go from the center chest out through your fingertips. Take your left hand, release it down to the left side of your pelvis and start to lean your body toward your right leg and allowing your right hand to come down. So the black on any height, you guys just have to check in with your body and see how it feels. So your low back is going to be a determinant for that. What's happening in the inner leg line is going to be a determinant of that uh, for pregnancy. You might not go down um, as deep, right? All right, so we can use the right elbow and the right inner knee, draw them in toward one another. Left hand can stay on your left hip, or you can breathe in and sweep your arm out to the side, stretch the arm up and maybe along the side of your face. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. Okay, one more inhalation. Now as you're exhaling, catch hold of your black, engage through the abdominals, and then let your body start to rise up. We're gonna let the black swing down, coming to the front short side of the mat. We're just gonna take a couple uh, tabletop uh, cat cow, right? So come to all fours and then let's just fluctuate the spine through flexion and extension. So breathe in, release your belly, lift your heart. Exhale, activate your hands round your spine. Inhale, release your belly, lift up through your heart. Exhale, press into your hands around your spine. Inhale, release your belly, lift up through your heart. This time as you're exhaling, press into the balls of the feet and come into downward facing dog. So as you arrive in the downward facing dog, you can begin to pedal through your knees and pedal through your feet. The leg that's moving towards straight, just noticing that heel reaching down toward the floor. So that's going to bring some stretch up through like the area of the back of the ankle there around the Achilles tendon and up through your calf muscles. All right, take one last inhale and one last exhale here. Okay, and then inhale, let your gaze go upward to your hands and you can begin to step your feet forward, coming into forward fold. All right, so as you're arriving there, inhale, you can lift your belly, reach out nice and long through your spinal column. And then you can exhale to start to hinge in a bit towards your legs, you might bend your knees, fold in with your head, breathe in, sweep your arms up to the side, rise all the way up and exhale, prayer hands coming together and down into your heart. All right, so angel breaths. 
So you're gonna just keep the hands at the heart. And you're gonna take a slight little baby bend in your knees. It's almost like a little miniature chair pose. As you breathe in, sweep your arms down and out to the side and sweep them up. So your palms face forward, your upper body's kind of like the top part of an X. As you exhale, sweep your arms down, mini chair. Okay, let's breathe in, sweep the arms out. Exhale, mini chair. Inhale, sweep the arms out. Exhale, mini chair. Last two times, inhale, sweep the arms out. Palms are facing forward, lift through your heart. Exhale, mini chair. Last one, inhale. Exhale, mini chair. Inhale, sweep your arms out and up. Come into extended mount so palms can face in toward one another. Exhale, prayer hands coming through the heart. Bend your knees and hinge your torso forward over your legs. Inhale, lift your belly away from your thighs. Take halfway lift with your spine. We're stepping the left foot back now into low lunge. It's gonna step the foot back and take the back knee down to the floor. Now you can keep your hands on your blocks for support. You can slide your hands up to your front right thigh, a little bit higher. Okay. So we wanna feel this sense of staying connected to the center while at the same time feeling expansive as we go into the pose. So it just feels your, your front heel and your back knee kind of draw together. You can also take Tarjani mudra if you like, a very simple mudra. You just bring your hands up about sternum level. Your index fingers extend out while your other fingers form a fist and you touch your index fingers together. So it directs the energy of the breath up into the lungs, chest, and heart, which helps to balance out the heavy dull energy. So lift up through your heart, take a deep inhale. Deep exhale. One more round of inhale. Exhale, lower your hands down to your blocks. Lift your back left knee away from the floor. Spin your left heel down to the mat. We're coming to Virabhadrasana to warrior two. So inhale, circle your arms around. Turn to face the left long side of your mat. Warrior two pulsing to just create a little more energy. So inhale, sweep your arms up, straighten your right knee. Exhale, allow your right knee to bend and bring your arms back out to parallel the floor. Two more times. Inhale, straighten the right knee. Sweep your arms up by your ears. Exhale, warrior two. Last time, inhale, sweep your arms up by your ears. Exhale, warrior two. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, cartwheel your arms around. Frame your front foot, spin off your left heel. Now we are gonna take the right foot into down dog split. So you're gonna take the blocks, scoot them to the side. You can either go straight into down dog split or you can come to down dog and then adjust your feet and take your leg up. Down dog, knee contractions. These can be done from tabletop, by the way. So feel free to lower that left knee down. Exhale, hook your right knee in towards your right elbow. Press into your hands and round your spine. Inhale, downward dog split. Right heel goes up, reach out long through the crown of your head. Exhale, right knee comes into the right elbow, round in your spine. Inhale, the right heel sweeps up, reach out through the crown of the head, down dog split. Exhale, right knee comes in toward the right elbow. Last two times, inhale, sweep your right leg up. Exhale, hook your right knee in toward your right elbow, press into your hands and round your back. Very last time, inhale, sweep your right heel up. And then as you're exhaling, let your right knee hook in. Inhale as you send your right heel up, and now as you exhale, set your right knee down, or your right foot down. We're gonna take a child's pose for a moment. So you're gonna take your knees down and slightly wide. Big toes coming together. Move your sitting bones back toward your heels. We're gonna stretch out 
through the right side of the body by walking the hands to the left. Sending the hips over gently to the right. Deep inhalation and deep exhalation. We're gonna walk the hands through the center and over to the right so that you can stretch out long through your left side body. Chin gently coming in toward the chest. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And then we're coming back to the center. So walking the hands to the center, allowing your hips to lift up, coming back into Barmanasana table. Slide your knees beneath your hips. So breathe in, let your belly release and lift up through your heart. And as you exhale, we're gonna go into downward facing dog. So draw the low belly in and float the knees away from the floor, downward facing dog. So here, just take a breath in. Take a deep breath out. We're gonna repeat the series of poses on the second side. So you're gonna let your weight come into your right ball of your foot. And you're gonna inhale, send your left heel up into downward facing dog split. Exhale, scooping the left knee in to step the, light, the left foot through and take your back right knee down to the floor. Okay, now your hands can stay, right? You can always keep them on your blocks. That'll give you extra support. You could slide your hands up to your front left thigh. For low back issues, you could even remain slightly tilted forward. That's all fine, right? Tarjani mudra, so you might bring your hands up, chest level. Extend out through your index fingers while the rest of your fingers come into a light fist and then touch your index fingers together right at the line of the, the sternum area. Draw your chin in slightly so the back of the skull is nice and long and the crown of your head's gonna reach up. Relax your shoulders, focus your eyes, breathe in. Deep breath out. Last inhalation. As you're exhaling, we're gonna bring the hands down to frame the left foot, root the right ball of the foot into the mat to lift the right knee away from the floor and spin the right heel down. Vira Bhadrasana two. Breathe in, grounding through your legs and your feet. As you cartwheel your arms around and allow your chest to turn to the right long side of your yoga mat. Breathe in, sweep your arms up by your ears and straighten your front left knee. And as you exhale, bend the left knee and bring your arms back out to parallel the floor. Breathing in, sweep your arms up so your low waist feels light and lifted up out of the pelvis. Exhale, bend your left knee and your arms reach out. Last one, inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, warrior two pose, pause there and feel your breath in, expand across your arms and your heart. Exhale, let your arms come around to frame your left foot and lift away from your right heel. Downward dog split with the left, Legs, you can step to down dog or you can take the left leg and just go right up. Remember you can do these from tabletop, so feel free to take your right knee and bring it down to the floor. Now as you're exhaling, hook your left knee in toward your same side elbow, so left elbow. Inhale, send your left heel back up toward the sky. Exhale, left knee hooks in toward the elbow, inhale, left heel sweeps up, exhale, left knee to elbow, press into your hands, round your back, two more times, inhale, left heel is gonna reach up, exhale, left knee is gonna hook in, press your hands strong, just one more time, so breathe in, reach your heel up, and exhale, hooking your left knee in, press into your hands. Inhale, send your left heel back up to the sky. 
Exhale, lower your left foot down. Widen your feet just a bit, sitting bone or frontal hip bone distance apart. You can kind of sway through your hips. We're gonna go right into our next standing pose, standing pose flow here. So we're gonna take the breath in, ground into the left foot, and inhale, sweep your right heel up into down dog split. Now as you're exhaling, we're gonna step the right foot through near the right wrist. Now for this one, we're gonna take high lunge, but if you wanna modify with low lunge, you can take the back knee down. Otherwise, put a baby bend in your back knee and start to rise up, maybe first bringing the hands to the hips. I kind of like to start here because then you can really tell like where your pelvis is in space. So take your sit your tailbone slightly down. Now you can stay with your hands on your hips or a more invigorating option is either the tar Tarjani Mudra again, or for a little bit of a back bend, interlock your hands and bring your hands to the back of your head. And then let the back of your head just kind of release into your hands as you tip your chin upward toward the sky. Take a breath in and a breath out. Okay, one more inhale. And so we'll all take the hands down to the mat momentarily. We're still gonna work on the right leg. So if you're in low lunge, lift your back left knee. And we'll all spin the back left heel down to the floor. Now, before you come up, we're gonna be taking extended side angle in a moment. And if you use a black for that pose, go ahead and bring it to the inner right ankle now, okay? And then inhale, circle your arms around. If you can feel maybe your right leg working a little hard. I can feel mine working a little hard. Okay, so for a moment, we're gonna take the arms, we're gonna sweep the arms up by the ears. And you're gonna interlock your hands and flip your palms up to the sky. So we're gonna do some shoulder pulsing here. So you can tell we're like throughout our practice, we're kind of at that building stage now. So we're gonna inhale, let the elbows bend. So the knuckles touch the top of the head. And with a powerful exhale, you're gonna breathe out through your mouth, press your palms up. <sighs> Two more times, inhale, let your elbows bend, touch the top of your head. <sighs> Last one, inhale, bend your elbows, touch the top of your head. And then last one, press up. So giving your right leg a break, so straighten your knee. Let your left hand start to release from your right. Tip it down to your left thigh or behind your low back for a variation of reverse warrior. So press pretty solid into your feet. And then just reach out through your right hand, open through your right ribs. Last exhale. As you inhale, come to warrior two. Okay, so here's our extended side. So left hand to left hip, right knee over right ankle, start to reach your right arm forward. You'll start to lean over that right thigh. Now we can come down, maybe even initially all of us to the thigh. And this may be where you stay, right? And some may place the hand on the block. You can adjust the height of the block. Some may take their hand to the floor, right? So just kind of feel into it, right? Um, and we can use the elbow and the knee, just like we did in that knee down variation. If you have your hand on the block, the ankle or the floor, can it anchor the knee and the elbow toward one another? Your left hand can stay on your hip or as you take your next breath in, you can sweep it down, around, and maybe up by your ear. As your arm goes by your ear, feel your low belly kind of draw in a little bit toward the spine. Nice full deep breath in. As you exhale, left arm's gonna sweep back in front of the belly, bring your hands down, frame your front foot, lift your back left heel, step back, downward facing dog. Okay, so for a moment, you may want child's pose, right? And for a moment, some of you may also want to lift your right leg into down dog split, bend your right knee, and take twisted three leg dog, because we have that right knee bent for a fair amount of time. So this will counterbalance that. Breathing in. Okay, 
Okay, deep breath out. Okay, and we're gonna let the right foot come down if it was up. If you're in child's pose, transitioning back up. We're gonna take this last standing flow on the second side and then we're gonna start to bring the energy back down again. So we're gonna shift the weight into the right ball of the foot and you're gonna breathe in and you're gonna allow your left heel to come up into down dog split. So press through your hands and feel your left heel really light to the sky. Exhale, curl your left knee in to step with the left foot through. Now you can keep your back knee up or feel, please feel free, lower it down. We're gonna come up first with the hands on the hips. You might keep that back knee at least initially bent, right? So tightness in the hip flexor region um, may, uh, may want you to, may cause you to wanna keep that back knee slightly bent, right? So hands to hips, or you can bring your hands to Tarjani Mudra, or again, interlock your hands, bring your hands to the back of your head, and then just let the back of your head release and relax into your hands, lift your chin, your gaze is upward, breath in. Deep breath out. Okay, one more inhalation here. And as you exhale, you're gonna let your hands come down to frame your left foot. Now, we're, if your knee is down, go ahead and lift it up. We're gonna spin the back right heel down to the floor. And you can bring your black, if you're gonna use your black, to the inner left ankle. You're gonna inhale, cartwheel your arms up, coming into the Vira Bhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. The arm pulsations. So we're gonna sweep the arms up by the ears, interlock your hands. So we're really close to finishing out this sequence. So just Focus your eyes, right? Press up through your palms. Inhale, bend your elbows. Let your knuckles touch the crown of the head. And exhale, press your palms back up. <sighs> Two more times. Inhale, bend your elbows. Lightly touch the knuckles to the crown of your head. Exhale, press your palms back up. <sighs> inhale. Last one. As you're breathing in, begin to straighten your left knee, release your right hand from your left hand and let your right hand come down onto your thigh or let your right arm loop around your low back for a half bind, version of reverse warrior. Deep inhalation through that left lung region, spaces between the rib case on the left side. Breathe in. As you're exhaling, finding your way back into Vira Bhadrasana to Warrior Two. Left knee over the ankle, reach out through your arms, release your right hand down to your right hip. Just so gonna breathe in, just let your shoulders relax. You're gonna exhale, start to lean your left arm and side body toward your left thigh. And so we might all just initially start by placing that left forearm down onto the left thigh. You can decide if you'd like to stay there or you can place your left hand down onto the black, the inner ankle, maybe some ones at the floor. The right hand can stay in to your right hip or you can breathe in and sweep your arm out all the way up and maybe it stops at 12 o'clock or maybe the arm comes along the side of the face. So you can feel a sense of lightness and lift in that top right side of the body. Okay, take a breath in. Now as you're exhaling, you can take this top right arm, sweep it up and back. As you start to swing it in front of the belly, let your hands come down to frame your front foot. You can spin off of your back heel, and then we're going to let the left foot come back into down dog. So you just start to be 
slowing it down now, right? Okay, so as you arrive in down dog, feel free to go to child's pose if you like. We're all going there in a moment. But if you want to counterbalance all of that movement for the left leg, you can inhale, left heel lifts. Left knee bends and opens to the side, twisted three leg dog. So in this one, it's really easy to let the sort of belly kind of dump forward. So draw your low front ribs slightly in. You might feel like you're not in, in the poses deep, but you're supporting your lower, more flexible lumbar spine. Breathe in, and as you exhale, let your left foot start to come back down. Down dog, take one more inhale. One more exhale. Okay. Inhale, let your knees come down to the floor, table. Uh, just a round or two of cat cow, breathe in, let your belly release, lift your heart. Exhale, press into your hands and round in your spine. Breathe in, let your belly release and take that light lift of your heart. Exhale as you press into your hands and round through your spine. And as you're breathing in, just letting your spine come to neutral. You want to take your big toes close and take your knees wider apart, and then you can shift back to child's pose, right? So wide knee child's pose, just stack your palms for a moment, stack your forehead onto your stacked palms. Feeling the deep circulation of the breath. So the movement of the body, the compression of the tissues, the activation and the stretching allows our body to be able to take a deeper inhalation and exhalation. We release the tension from the tissues, which allow you to breathe more deeply. Okay, last inhale. And last exhale. Okay, and then we're rising up, coming up through all fours. We're gonna come around uh, to a seated position. So you can swing your legs to the right or left or cross your ankles and sit straight back. We'll bring your legs out in front of you. So you might want to sit on the edge of that blanket that you were maybe using for your knee. So I usually like to fold it up one extra time and then just shift the pelvis right onto the edge of that blanket and then send the heels forward into the andasana, the staff position. So you might even start with your knees a little bit bent. So kind of anchor down into the heels. Fingerprints can come to the floor. So you can use your fingerprints to kind of press down into the earth and help you lengthen your spine up. And you can always keep your knees bent. So some people may find that this is uh, better for their spine or their hips. And some people are going to kind of press out through the heels and start to take the legs more toward straight. Now you can keep your fingerprints down on the floor. I just wanna offer one more arm extension. The arms upward really allows for that sense of lightness and wakefulness that helps to balance out that dull quality. So if you like, you can stretch your arms up by your ears, press your sitting bones down and just take your low front ribs, kind of draw them in a bit. Press through your hands, take a breath in. Take a breath out. One more inhalation. As you're exhaling, let your arms 
sweep out to the side. So just take your left leg, open it like 30 degrees to the left. You can either bend your right knee so that the knee falls open or point your knee up to the sky. So your right knee is a little bit to the right. So you have room for your body. We're going to twist to the left. So left hand coming back behind you, right elbow to the inside of the right knee. You're going to anchor your right knee and elbow together like we've done a few times. And then just turn your heart toward the left. As you twist through your spine and reach up through the crown of the head, just going to rotate through the head just a couple times. You can turn the head to the right and then to the left. Just looking toward your right hand and then past your left shoulder. Okay, last one. And then coming back around to the center, we're just gonna switch out the legs. So right leg is gonna go that 30 degrees. The left knee can bend with the foot to the inner thigh because you can twist that way or you're going to point your knee up toward the sky. So you're going to hook the elbow to the inside of the knee or if the knee is falling open, just hold the hand to the front of the knee. Okay, we're all twisting to the right, no matter what the position is with the left knee. So press through your right heel, spread through your right toes, spread through your left fingers and turn your heart to the right. And as you twist through your spine and elevate upward through the crown of the head while remaining rooted, especially through the right sitting bone, we'll rotate the head a few times. Okay, last rotations. Okay. Okay, and then as your head is coming back around to the front, you can release your spinal column from the twist. You can take both legs out in front of you, scoot your hips off of your blanket support, move your blanket support out to the right or to the left. You're gonna come on down uh, to your spine. Uh, so you're welcome to do the rolling down. I don't find that works well for my spine, so I usually take the easy route to just kind of bring myself down. So we're gonna take full happy baby here. So draw both knees and both thighs into your ribs. Now you can always keep more of like a wide knee happy, uh, wide knee knees to chest, or you can take both ankles up over the knees, reach up for your calves, your ankles, your shins, your outer edges of your feet. Now sometimes people like to do peace fingers around the big toes and, and that's fine too. Just make sure that you're staying really strong through the outer ankles. Sometimes peace fingers around the big toes, I find leads to inversion of the feet. So press through your heels, take your knees toward the earth while your feet reach up and the tailbone is gonna reach to the front short side of your mat. Take a breath in. And a breath out. Okay, and then you can let your knees come back into knees into chest. Placing your feet down to the earth as you're ready in one last full body stretch. So before you head that way, if you need any windshield wipers, just kind of sway through the legs. And as you feel ready, take your legs out, stretch your arms up. And from that full body stretch, you're gonna let your body start to shift into final Shavasana. So let your arms come down by your sides. Palms face upward toward the space above you. Just a, a lot of attention to the feeling of the space that surrounds your body.
Coming back into the feeling of your body supported by the earth. Noticing the circulation of your breath. Breathing in a little more fully, feeling the inhalation begin to enliven the physical body and your mind. You can allow your knees one at a time to bend, placing your feet upon the earth. Rolling to the right or to the left side of your body. Pressing your hands down and giving rise back upward to your body. As you come to your seat, you can let your hands come together at your heart in prayer. The light within me sees and bows to that same light that exists within you. Namaste.